Well, you both talk about um, really blazing trails and being the first in, in many ways in what you do. So to whom do you look for your inspiration? You know, when, you're the first, when you're the first person over a line, there, there, there is no one ahead of you to whom you can look in terms of a, an exact role model. So where do you look for your inspiration and your role models? You better say me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. He didn't pay me enough beforehand, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll, I will answer that other question the right way. So, you know, <laughs> what I would say, looking for inspiration, I find inspiration everywhere. Um, and mm -hmm. so there were the three uh, questions that you submitted uh, beforehand and about sort of who inspires me. And I think it's sort of, I'm going to stick with those answers, actually, because it, it really, it's everywhere. Um, I find inspiration in people all the time, whether mm -hmm. it's small acts that folks do that you're just sort of like, wow, I can't believe that, um, or really, really big gestures. And so, you know, I start with friends and family. I think that I have some, I feel very blessed and fortunate to have amazing people in my life um, that I see as role models. Uh, and it's great to sort of be around people who make me and inspire me, make me want to be a better person. Um, and I really sort of strive to do that, and not only sort of in my personal life, but professionally as well. Um, so, you know, I just started as the new president of the American Association of People with Disabilities. And, and as we're sort of putting together a team there, you know, my goal is to put together people who inspire me. So just as much as my job is to inspire them, I, I really want to be with people who every day are showing up, are doing hard work because they know there is an important task at hand. Um, and so finding people who inspire you and surrounding yourselves with people who inspire you is such an important thing. Um, for the work that I'm doing now, uh, believe it or not, one of my role models, and I think she's speaking on Sunday, is Elizabeth Birch. Um, I had uh, the great honor of working with her at the Human Rights Campaign for almost half a decade. And the work that she did um, to really help organize our movement, I think was very, very powerful. And so as I sort of look to, to this other community that I'm also a part of, the disability community, um, I think there are a lot of lessons learned um, from our advocacy as a community. Um, and a lot of things that we can do in the disability community um, that haven't been done before, you know, rating corporations on how they are on disability issues, you know, having a congressional scorecard, uh, you know, making it easy for folks to, to get in touch with their legislators. Um, these are things that we haven't done as a community very well in the past, um, but I actually look to, to her and her experience um, building HRC is one very, very concrete role model. Um, but then getting to the point that I think everyone can be inspiring, um, one of my answers was veterinarians, and I, I don't know if folks read this, but I know so many people in my life that every once in a while they will comment, you know, I wish I had been a veterinarian. And so they inspire, they, to me it's just a group of people, and I know there's danger in going and making generalizations, but a group of people who you were like, you know what, this is what I want to do, this is what I'm passionate about, and I'm going to do it, and I don't care what anyone says. Um, and so, so that's sort of a... Say, yeah. Anyone else? Who here else? Who, who else here wanted Me. to be a vet? Let's see a show of hands. <laughs> Don't be shy. Come on. You, you know go. it's yeah. true. All right, at least a couple yeah, of people. Yeah, a few. And so you know I, that to me, it's just people who go after their dreams <laughs> and and put their passion behind making it happen. Um, and whether you're successful or not, um, I think the the act of going for it is the most important thing. How about you, Mo? Well, well, can I start on the veterinarian thing? <laughs> <laughs> I actually do say this a lot. I say. Mark, I agree with you. I, I'm not going to say the veterinarians are, are one of my three <laughs> most inspirational uh, groups of people, but I will say that how a uh, person treats animals tells me all I need to know about them. Mm -hmm. So I totally get where you're coming from. And I think that's probably part of that yep. inspiration, yep. isn't it? Um, but, you know, I, I like Mark, um, feel very, very, very lucky that I, uh, I cannot ever answer this question without as cliche as it may sound my parents um god continue to inspire me to this day you know it's amazing i watched my dad practice law for 55 years and he would come home and and he would have done like a big case that week or that month and at the dinner table we'd say so dad how much did you make you know as a little kid you know you're like how much did you make and he'd say i made a bushel of tomatoes and we would say, what? And that is how we, he inspired us and we learned. Daddy would do pro bono work before pro bono was, uh, was mandated. Hmm. And that's what I grew up seeing. So it inspired us to always 
remember those that are disenfranchised, that those that are voiceless, those that may be out of the system, and to always remember to go back and bring them along. Um, I really believe in paying it forward, and I believe in karma, mm -hmm. and I believe that when uh, you know we were Wait, you work in DC and you believe in karma. So. I do, I really do. I feel and very if, uncomfortable you know, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't. Uh, another time, maybe we can have another conversation. But uh, I wish I could sit here for four hours with you and share karmic examples. I really believe that it's about the energy we put out to the universe. How about, how about one, for instance? Uh, I just can't, I've got to rush back right now to a meeting. I came to New York for a whole different agenda this morning in addition to volunteer to come and do this because I was so humbled that Richard had asked me to do this. And I'm at a meeting, I go in there with an agenda, just, you know, a set, just a very specific little thing. 45 minutes into the meeting, the second wealthiest family in a country on the other side of the world, I can't say which country because you'll go figure out who it is, looks at me 45 minutes into the meeting and says, how would you like to own 50% of a new company we're going to launch? We'd like you to do it with us. That's good karma. That That's good really karma. good karma, yes. you know? <laughs> when you're sitting in there and that, w I, that wasn't my intention. And so to me, that's put out good energy we get it back. Reap what we sell. Yeah, you know, others that inspire me, you know what, again, I don't wanna be cliche. I, I, I cannot tell you, I was at the 20th anniversary of Bill Clinton's announcement for the presidency this past weekend in Little Rock, Arkansas. I, he inspires me. Mm -hmm. I, hearing him speak again reminded me of what could be. Mm -hmm. Because when you hear him and you hear, not only is he a genius, and a policy wonk, but he has the people skills. And yes, did he make some personal moral mistakes? Yeah, who the hell cares? Did he make the country a better place? Yeah. Absolutely. Is he making the world a better place today? Absolutely. So he inspires me because you know what? He, he made a mistake, he got up, he brushed himself off, he asked for forgiveness. We all make mistakes and he inspires me because he continues every day he gets up to make a difference. Um, and as for the third one, I, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna be 50 in 10 days. You're much younger than I am. So thank you. But I only tell you because I don't remember what the hell I put on that questionnaire <laughs> on who the third person was that inspired me. I think it was Gandhi, but. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I, anyway, who knows who the third one so was. So you talk about good, giving back and um, you know, we talk, uh, we, we wanna, Obviously, we're here to talk about politics politics mm -hmm. as well. I also want to encourage you all. Are, do we have any questions so far? Questions, comments, thoughts? Do you guys have coffee? We're not inspiring you guys have that much. You know, there's no, espre no an espresso bar out there, right? <laughs> okay, just making. Can, we, can we get the IV drip? <laughs> <laughs> just, I have a question. Yes? Mo, so you speak about being the first gay American, the first Latino American. What was it like when you walked into this? Because, you know, as people of color, you know, we walk into a room that's, mm -hmm. you know, we're the only ones. Yeah. What was the thought in your mind the first moment you walked in? Well, ironically, the first time, Deepa, was Mark was in diapers, which is kind of <laughs> ironic, isn't it? Um, can I just, can I imitate to answer? <laughs> I, I do this actually in some speeches I get. Wait, are you this imitating is, me in diapers or no, something else? No, not you in diapers. <laughs> this is me in the Clinton White House, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Gracias. And this is me in the Obama White House. <laughs> Somebody that answers got the, your question. You, you got some swagger. Yeah, you, you know, when you're the first, like back then, we remember before Richard Socrates, who couldn't be with us today, was uh, had a conflict. But um, before Richard, Marsha Scott was the first LGBT liaison in the history of any White House. And she remains a very dear friend. She was just with Brian and I in Little Rock this weekend. Um, and you know, we were just reminiscing, uh, being nostalgic about this kind of question because when you are the first, you know what? You're held to a different standard. And I feel like we have a responsibility 
Uh, and we can't ever forget that we have a responsibility. Uh, it may not be right and fair, mm -hmm. but I think you have to perform. Mark alluded to it earlier. Mm -hmm. Just do a good job. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how I felt. I felt like I needed to go in there and, and uh, not because I was gay and Hispanic, but more because I just wanted them to see that I was gay and Hispanic and I was just, I belonged and I was just as talented mm -hmm. or skilled and, and that's questionable. Let me make that clear. <laughs> but he was talking about tap dancing before. Yeah, right. So, so I hope yeah. that kind of answers your question. By the way, I, Kathy, I have to acknowledge my boyfriend is oh. here with me, and you know, straight people do this on their panels. Yeah. My wife Lizzie Joe is here, so you know what? My boyfriend Brian is back there, and uh, and if you'll look around and look at him, uh, he he. Let's not embarrass Brian, him. Raise, raise right your hand, then. Brian. There he is. Yeah. And you know what? The reason I want you to, to look around and see him is because uh, I gave a speech in, in the Bay Area about a month ago, and Brian was in the audience, and I said, and, my, and it was a bunch, it was 500 Hispanics at, at Charles Schwab's headquarters, and I said, and my boyfriend Brian is here, and they all, and they turned around and looked at him, they came back, I waited for the applause to die down and saw this. So I waited for a second, and I said, um, yes, he's half my age. Okay, <laughs> and they're all like, oh, he caught us, you know, and then I said for about 15 minutes, you're going to go, my God, he's half his age. I said in about 20 minutes, you're going to call and congratulate me. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait on the way out. Oh, One no. of you is going to go, good for you. 